the southern Patagonian ice field with 12,500 square kilometers of ice and snow has suffered a marked retreat of its glaciers that has increased in the last 35 years. There are more than 200 glaciers in it. The area of this ice cap in Argentine territory covers 3,500 square kilometers, where 13 large glaciers descend to the basins of Viedma and Argentino lakes, both united to the great mass of continental ice. The first glacier inventory of the area was achieved by Bertone in the 60s. Here we displayed on a satellite image from the Argentinian satellite SACC. They have been watched monthly since 1986 by the eyes of the best spotters, Earth observation satellites. Since then, and mostly in last years, we can observe an increasing velocity with a positive trend and a large volumetric retreat throughout the area, exposing new water bodies and thus modifying the flow of the rivers and lakes. Uppsala Glacier was considered the longest in Patagonia, Argentina, but to date it has receded so much that it is separating from its tributaries, such as the Bertaki Glacier. We can observe and measure its retreat by means of topographic maps and Landsat, Spot and Sentinel Satellites time series, among others. We compare many images from different years and measure how much surface of the glacier was lost. The rate of melting ice at the ablation zone is increasing. We can also measure the retreat of its front. From 1986 to 2022, it is about 10 kilometers. We obtained some meteorological data from direct measurements and NOAA satellites. The drop in the level of precipitation and higher temperatures in the ablation zone influences in a negative way to the mass balance. We also measure its mass balance by means of the geodetic method. It consists in measuring elevation changes over time from various digital elevation models, or DEMS, constructed over the glacier surface. Elevations from older DEMS, often constructed from historical topographic information, are subtracted from more recent DEMS constructed from remote sensing imagery such as Aster, SRTM, Tandem X, and others. With DEMS information, we can also estimate how much did the glacier decrease in terms of height along its central moraine. Another kind of measure we can achieve by means of satellite data is ice velocity. For this, we use radar data from Sentinel-1 or SALCOM satellites. We mask out the pixels that belong to the ablation area and we compare two images close enough in time in order to measure the displacement of certain traceable objects between them. This method is called offset tracking. It looks for matching patterns in both images within a given area and performs a cross-correlation. With this information, we try to find the relation between flow, velocity and ice melting in time. The famous Perito Moreno Glacier used to form an ice bridge that fell every three or four years. However, it is now on an annual basis. Viedma Glacier, the largest in the country, can no longer be visited by boat due to its larger ice breaks that endanger the lake's tours. Icebergs are so huge that satellites can see them from space. We also measure its mass balance and ice retreat along its central moraine. We have also classified different kind of snow and ice structures within the glacier by means of optical and SAR sensors. Band ratios and indices are used since they help to map areas with clean ice, snow, ice with rocky debris, water or moraines. Texture channels were generated based on SAR Sentinel-1 images, which were added to the database. We carried out supervised classifications, which, together with samples acquired in field campaigns, improved the classifications. 
This shows a multi-temporal analysis using remote sensing and meteorological data in a group of glaciers called Glaciares Escondidos. They are Dixon, Cubo and Frias glaciers. Due to the loss of mass and the retreat of the fronts, the meltwater that traveled more than 250 kilometers to cross the arid plain of Patagonia to finally end at the Atlantic Ocean, today flows towards the Pacific Ocean. We observe new proglaciary lakes, an increase in the speed of retreat, and a high speed of ice flow. We make use of multi-temporal measurements and offset tracking techniques with radar images for those estimations. Likewise, we present mass balance studies on these three glaciers for the last 20 years using the geodetic method.